All right, so that wraps up the modularity assumption. We started with the modularity assumption, and then that gave us the truncated factorization, which then gave us this nice little identification. And in this section, on the backdoor adjustment, we're going to generalize that identification process to more than just that simple graph. So we'll start with the general graphical intuition, which is that you should have in mind that you want to block backdoor paths. Where backdoor paths are the paths that have edges into T that are then paths from T to Y. So this path T to M to Y is not a backdoor path, it's a directed path, and that's where causal association flows. And these are backdoor paths, which non-causal association flows along. And we want to block these paths so that we can isolate the causal association. So if we replicate this graph and look at the interventional distribution, P of Y given do T, because we're intervening on T, we actually remove all of the incoming edges to T. And that removes all of these backdoor paths because now there's no incoming edges to T. So when we intervene on T, it's really easy to isolate the causal association. But this is an interventional distribution. We'd like to be able to mimic this using just observational data. The way we can do that is if we go back to the left, instead of looking at P of Y given T, we can look at P of Y given T given other variables like C and W2. When we condition on C and W2 here, they block these backdoor paths. So as we saw in the last lecture, when we condition on these variables in forks, then it blocks the flow of association along those forks. And there's nothing particularly special about W2 here. We also could have conditioned on C and W1, and that would have blocked the flow of non-causal association a bit earlier on that backdoor path. We also could have conditioned on W1, C, and W3. Okay, so this is the intuition. We want to block these backdoor paths so that we can mimic what we would have gotten if we were to intervene on T, actually removing all of the backdoor paths. With just observational data, we might not be able to remove those edges into T, but we can block the non-causal association that flows through those backdoor paths. With that intuition in mind, we'll now introduce the backdoor adjustment and the important backdoor criterion that's necessary to get the backdoor adjustment. We say that a set of variables, W, satisfies the backdoor criterion relative to treatment and outcome if the following are true. The first is that W blocks all backdoor paths from T to Y. This is the intuition that we just covered in the last slide. And then the second is that W does not contain any descendants of treatment. This part may be less obvious, and we'll cover this in more detail in a few slides from now. Then we get the backdoor adjustment. So given the modularity assumption and that W satisfies the backdoor criterion, we can identify the causal effect of T on Y as follows. Right, so this is the same equation that we saw when we applied the truncated factorization to that simple graph where X was a confounder of the effect of T on Y. But the backdoor adjustment works for general graphs. If W satisfies the backdoor criterion, we say that W is a sufficient adjustment set because W is sufficient to adjust for to get the causal effect of T on Y. Okay, so how do we prove this? We want to start with P of Y given do T, and then through a series of steps, transform that into this statistical estimate that we have on the bottom here. To aid intuition for this proof, we will display this graph on the bottom here. It's not necessary that this is the actual causal graph, but this will be helpful for intuition. The first step is to just get W in there somehow, because it seems like W is important. We do this by just conditioning on W and summing over it. 
Then, because W blocks all backdoor paths from T to Y, the only association flowing from T to Y is causal association. So we can remove this do T in the factor for Y. Then we need to somehow get rid of the do in the factor for W. To do this, we'll think about what association flows from T to W. Because we're intervening on T, there are no incoming edges to T. So no association can flow from T to W through backdoor paths. Because there are no incoming edges to T, there are no backdoor paths. So the only way that association could flow from T to W is through paths that are directed out of T, not backdoor paths. And this is where the second part of the backdoor criterion comes into play. We can't actually have any association flowing from T to W that's directed out of T because it will run into colliders. So in this example graph, it runs into the collider Y. And the second part of the backdoor criterion that we have conditioned on no variables that are descendants of T guarantees that we don't condition on any colliders or any children of colliders that will induce association between T and W. So there's no association flowing from T to W along backdoor paths, and there's no association flowing from T to W that is directed out of T. That allows us to get this final equality. And if you want another perspective on this proof, go ahead and check out the corresponding portion of the course textbook. It turns out that the backdoor criterion is actually intimately connected to deseparation. So the spoiler is that we're going to frame the backdoor criterion in terms of deseparation between T and Y. Here is an example graph G on the left here, and we show that non-causal association flows along a backdoor path, and it also flows along a path through X2, because the collider X2 is conditioned on here, and causal association flows along the directed path from T to Y. Okay, so how do we frame the backdoor criterion in terms of deseparation? The first part of the backdoor criterion is that W blocks all backdoor paths from T to Y. So in this graph, that's like conditioning on W2 and getting rid of this non-causal association. Then, if we look at the second part of the backdoor criterion, which says that W does not contain any descendants of T, then that prohibits us from conditioning on X2, which gets rid of the non-causal association that was flowing through X2. So now only causal association remains, and we want to somehow get rid of this association to get deseparation. If we remove all outgoing edges from T, then we remove that causal association. And we'll denote this graph where we remove all outgoing edges from T as G sub T with a line over it. Since we've removed the causal association, which was the last kind of association that remained after we had the backdoor criterion satisfied, now we have deseparation between T and Y. So we can frame the backdoor criterion as Y being deseparated from T by W in the graph where the outgoing edges from T are removed. So that's a pretty important connection between deseparation and the backdoor criterion. With that, I'll pose the following question to you. How does the backdoor adjustment relate to the adjustment formula that we saw in the potential outcomes lecture in week two? Here, I list the backdoor adjustment and the adjustment formula for the ATE from the potential outcomes lecture. And you can find the answer to this question in section 4.4.1 of the Introduction to Causal Inference course book.